ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजनशलाकय चक्षुरुन्मील ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो हियर वी आर सी the passage of the living entity based on his karma based on his desire how he transmigrates from one body to another some fortunate living entity also have the facility especially if he is careful in his human form of life follow the prescribed duties and somehow or the other fix his mind on the supreme lord then he'll be able to become completely disentangled from this material bondage and enter into the spiritual world so Uh, these are the topics of description here in this portion so in today's verse we see dviparardhe avasane yah dviparardha avasane parardha refers to 50 years of lord brahma half of his life span so dviparardha meaning his full life span 100 years of lord brahma which comes to some 400 trillions of years approximately <coughs> so this is dviparardha dviparardha avasane yah pralayo brahmana stute so what will happen after the duration of brahma's life span so that is that is uh, that is said here that there will be pralaya complete annihilation of the material world this universe complete annihilation of this universe so in the purport shila prabhu pada writes how there are two kinds of pralayas one pralaya dissolution devastation which takes place at the end of <coughs> the day of brahma during the night time of brahma it is partial dissolution so during which time a portion of the creation of lord brahma more specifically the lower regions the upper planetary systems above swarga loka and all they will remain but below it everything will become uh, devastated <coughs> so this is known as uh, partial devastation or partial dissolution this is one kind of pralaya another kind of pralaya is at the end of brahma's life that's what is referred to here pralayo brahmanastute at the end of brahma's life so brahma's days there that itself is such a sahasra yuga paryantam aharya brahmano vidu and such whatever 365 days makes brahma's year and such 100 years after that time period 
passes by there is complete annihilation of the universe so that's the duration of brahma so brahma that's also post in this material creation so there is also birth and death for brahma also so once brahma dies the entire universe is annihilated so from still a higher scale higher view point if we look at so what's actually happening that's the time when garbhoda kashay vishnu he uh, sorry karanoda kashay vishnu everything the entire whatever material creation what what comes out from his exhalation everything is wound up again back into his body so that's the end of brahma's life so that is complete devastation so dviparardha avasane yah pralayo brahmana stute tavat adhyasate lokam parasya parachintaka tavat adhyasate adhyasate means he stays he remains or he dwells the living entity here if we see the translation prabhupada writes worshippers of the hiranyagarbha expansion of the personality of god so this hiranyagarbha expansion meaning referring to garbhodaka shai vishnu prabhupada makes it clear in the purport so uh, we are aware how there are varieties of path different living entities based on their inclination take up to various processes of spiritual life so predominantly they are categorized as pravritti marga and nivritti marga step by step following of the varnashrama order then uh, whatever satisfying different devatas following the vedic injunctions following of uh, different kinds of tapasya performance of yagna dana all of those things so there is one this uh, gradual process and there is another process nivritti dharma fixing the mind directly on the supreme lord and there again so many varieties are there fixing the whatever like say there are impersonalists there are yogis who fix the mind on the paramatma feature in their heart and there are of course devotees pure devotees who engage in loving devotional service towards the supreme lord so all of these categories are there so here one category is being spoken of worshippers of the hiranyagarbha expansion of the personality of godhead remain within this material world until the end of two parardhas when lord brahma also dies so there are these worshippers of the hiranyagarbha expansion so what will happen to them so this hiranyagarbha expansion is also an expansion of the supreme lord <coughs> we have heard from the brahma samhita रामादि मूर्तिषु कला नियमेन तिष्टन रामा वामना मधुसूदन दीज आर ऑल डिफरेंट एक्सपेंशन ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड अगेन इन अनदर वर्स ऑफ ब्रह्म संहिता इट इज सेड दीपार्चिरे वि दशातरम अभ्युपेत द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ कैंडल लाइट इज गिवन द ओरिजिनल कैंडल मे बी कृष्ण but from that candle there are many lamps which are lit and all of those candles or lamps are equally potent <coughs> shri shri krishna balaram ki they diffuse light which is equal to the original candle so if we see the energy diffusion what happens there the light emanation everything is the same the original candle and the subsequent candles there is no difference at all but still there is variety govindam adi purusham tamam bhajami 
still there is that original Lord Govinda. <coughs> so, so here again we need to understand there is difference. <coughs> Just like uh, the, 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 like said the Prabhupada mentions here, Parasya Parachintaka, meaning always thinking of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or being always Krishna conscious. Parasya Parachintaka. Now, this Parasya Parachintaka, always thinking about the Supreme Lord, fixing the Supreme Lord in one's mind, this is the sum and substance of Krishna consciousness. Always think of Krishna, never forget him. Smartavya Satatam Vishnu Vismartavyo Najatuchit. And we say this is in fact the supreme instruction uh, given the Bhagavad Gita in the final chapter when Krishna says mm, like this is the highest, most confidential thing, highest instruction of mine I will be giving to you, O Arjuna. Shruru me paramam vachaha. And he says, Manmana, Avamad Bhakto, Madhyaji, Mahamasku. So here, Manmana, always think of me. So now, let us see what Prabhupada says here. Bhagavad Gita Bhagavad Or in mobile, I'll search it. Krishna says, Manmana Bhava Man Bhakto. There, so through these verses we understand how Krishna and all of his plenary expansions are all one and the same, equally potent. Any of the form we can worship, we can think. But here Srila Prabhupada says, no, we should be Yes, here. Good. But in the purport to this verse, Manmana Bhava Mad Bhakto, Srila Prabhupada says, How? <coughs> yeah. These words stress that one should concentrate his mind upon Krishna, the very form with two hands carrying a flute, the bluish boy with a beautiful face and peacock feathers in his hair. So specifically to Krishna, hmm? bluish complexion, holding a flute, uh, all the description Prabhupada is giving. <coughs> there are descriptions of Krishna found in the Brahma Samhita and other literatures. One should fix his mind on this original form of Godhead, Krishna. He should not even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. See? <clears throat> so there is, there is, as we say, simultaneous, there is oneness also, difference also is there. So as it is said here, one may say, uh, the yogi or the uh, person, living entity, whom is referred to in this verse, he is fixing his mind on Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu, who is non-different from Krishna. But there is difference. So what will happen? Here it is mentioned how that person who fixes his mind on the Hiranyagarbha expansion of the Lord, he has to remain in this material world till the end of Brahma's lifespan. <coughs> so Brahma's lifespan is it, it's very huge. <coughs> so till then he remains in the upper planetary systems, more specifically Satyaloka in the planet of Lord Brahma. And then when complete annihilation takes place, uh, whatever final devastation takes place. At that point of time, along with Lord Brahma, he goes back to Godhead. 
on the other hand what will be the result of that person who directly fixes his mind on specifically like krishna maybe like in the 12th chapter we find one reference where krishna says ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matparah ananye naiva yogena maam dhyayanta upasate तेषाम अहम समुद्धर्त मृत्यु संसार सागरा भवा न चिरा पार्थ मयि आवेशित चेतसा दोसु अनडीवियेटिंगली फिक्स्ड देयर माइंड अपॉन मी माम ध्यायंत उपासते अनन्ये नैव योगेन अनडीवियेटिंगली हु थिंक अबाउट मी न चिरा पार्थ वे आई एम द स्विफ्ट डिलीवरर he'll not delay very swiftly he'll act in picking up that devotee and taking him back to his abode tesha maham samuddharta mrutya samsara sagara na chirat partha and the swift deliverer so this difference also we should be aware so that's why here we see this purport shila prabhupada writing <coughs> one should fix his mind on this original form of godhead krishna he should not even divert his attention to other forms of the lord the lord has multi forms as vishnu narayana rama varaha etc but a devotee should concentrate his mind on the form that was present before arjuna concentration of the mind on the form of krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge and this is disclosed to arjuna because arjuna is the dear most uh, most dear friend of krishna's <coughs> so this is that most confidential knowledge revealed in the bhagavad gita because this is revealed to arjuna why bhakto si sakha cheti he is a devotee he is a friend of krishna intimately connected with krishna related to krishna so this is revealed that yes prabhupada is telling very specifically that the instruction given is to specifically think about that form of krishna holding a flute bluish complexion standing in tribanga for yes this is the most confidential instruction given to arjuna which uh, devotees need to catch it <coughs> so this is one thing dvipardha avasaneyah pralayo brahmanastute tavat adhyasate lokam parasya parachintaka so this most important thing parasya parachintaka to always think of krishna so now <coughs> let us try to understand about the various obstacles which as sadakas we face in thinking about krishna always so in the first point why are we unable to think of krishna always so this is the most important instruction this is the sum and substance of our krishna consciousness this is the ultimate instruction and all other instructions are subservient to this instruction theory we know but when it comes to practical application yes we find it difficult in one place in the chaitanya charitamrita it is said <coughs> मलिन हईले मन न हि कृष्णे रस्मरण इट इज बिकॉज द मैंड इज पोल्यूटेड कंटैमिनेटेड सो देर इज लाइक लॉट ऑफ डिस्ट्रैक्शन इन आर एंडेवर टू थिंक अबाउट कृष्णा ऑलवेज सो वॉट इज दिस मलिन वेरियस काइंड ऑफ अनवॉन्टेड थिंग्स आर देर specifically the desire to enjoy independent of krishna that's the original desire 
original contamination, the root contamination, to enjoy or exist, live independent of Krishna. Because the nature of the living entity, his constitutional position is to always be under the protection of Krishna, maintenance of Krishna, shelter of Krishna. But if at all he thinks just to exist independent of Krishna and then enjoy independent of Krishna, his enjoyment, the living entity's uh, enjoyment lies in serving Krishna, giving enjoyment to Krishna. That's his constitutional position. By giving enjoyment to Krishna, by gratifying the senses of Krishna, the living entity becomes happy. He becomes blissful. That's the way for him to enjoy. <clears throat> so any position he takes, which is not in line with this, that is said to be contamination. So when such desires come, he is sent to this material world with the intensity he has to enjoy, he will associate with the three modes of material nature and the three modes of material nature will create such a situation, will give him certain specific body and mind, everything, so that he can forget Krishna, forget about serving Krishna, and try out, try what, try to enjoy independent of Krishna, which actually doesn't happen. So that's the world of Maya. She creates one illusion. You have such a desire, go try it out. So a living entity, in varieties of ways, he keeps trying to live and enjoy independent of Krishna. That takes up the form of becoming something bigger, great, uh, whatever we see in the material world. People's endeavor, desire to become, uh, to elevate themselves to some higher positions in whatever material hierarchies, to become a big philanthropist and do some social service and help others. See, all of these things. These are all different contaminations only. Mm. Stemming out from that original desire to be independent of Krishna. So now, the whole process of sadhana bhakti, which is performed under the direction of an expert spiritual master, to bring back the mind from all varieties of distractions. <coughs> Maya proposes or puts forward in front of us varieties of things. Yes, come like this, you be like this, you take this, you'll be happy hundreds and thousands and millions of things at every moment that whatever Maya keeps offering us. Even after we become devotee, of course we have not become pure devotees, we are trying to become devotees, we have taken up the devotional life. Still Maya continues to test us, offering us varieties of things, any desire if we want the desire to maintain some material attachments. As a sadhaka, we are aware what desire is in line with Krishna consciousness, what desire is against whatever the development progress in Krishna consciousness. So in the beginning stage, we may not be able to completely give up all kinds of material desires, but at least we should be aware of it. And when such desires come, we should feel guilty about it. We should pray to the Lord to help us come out of it. So this is devotional path. On the other hand, if we become attached to those desires and we don't feel anything about desiring in the wrong way, then again we are going in some wrong direction. 
So ultimately we should be completely fully conscious of eliminating whatever all unwanted needs, different forms of uh, whatever subtle, gross desires, eliminating all of them, making the mind completely pure, only then will we be able to think about Krishna always. And the easiest process also, <coughs> Prahlada Maharaja, he says, Naisham Matis Tavad Urukramangrim. Even before that he says, Matir Na Krishna Parataswatova. By our own personal endeavor and to the help of others or combined effort through any of material efforts, no, you can never think about Krishna. But on the other hand, if somehow or the other, hmm, if we can get the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee of Krishna, then it is possible. Our minds become uncontaminated, it becomes purified. In the purified stage, there is natural attraction towards the Supreme Lord. There is natural attraction. A living entity naturally is attracted because of the contamination. That attraction is not there. <clears throat> Just like the condition of uh, like some iron filings, like pieces of iron. By nature, uh, the characteristic of iron is to get attracted to a magnet. Just like uh, when we were small children, we used to play with that magnet, put some iron pieces on top of a paper and below, say, place one magnet. And if you move that magnet on top of that whatever iron pieces, they also move because of that whatever attraction. What if the iron pieces have become rusted? In that rusted condition, it, it, it has lost its natural characteristic. It has lost its natural whatever tendency to become attracted to that magnet. So in that condition, that attraction is not there. So now we should be aware. All of us having come to this material world, we are in that contaminated state. Therefore, that natural attraction is not there. <coughs> Nityasi. <coughs> Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti Sadhya Kabunaya Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Karaya Budaya. So, this Krishna Bhakti or Krishna Prema attraction towards the Supreme Lord is there with the spirit soul. Because of this contaminated condition, now that attraction is not there. He is unable to fix his mind on Krishna. So, Shravana Adi Shuddhe Chitte. Strictly, we have to stick on to the process of Shravana Adi. Shravana, Kirtana, Smarana, Vandana, Padasevana, Archana. Through all of these varieties of Bhakti Yoga processes, Shravana Adi Shuddhe Chitte. We have to be focused towards cleansing. Or cheto darpana marjanam purification. So then, shravana adi shuddhe chitte karaya udaya. Then our natural attraction towards Krishna will come out. So this should be the endeavor, and this very quickly it will happen if we stick on to the instructions given by our spiritual master, who is a pure devotee, and through that we will be able to undeviatingly unrestrictedly, unobstructedly a point may come when we will be able to fix our minds on Krishna 24 hours a day. So we will conclude with this. Grantraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki Srila Prabhupada ki